Okay, recording is going to start soon. Okay, recording has just started. Welcome everyone to the class today on church and ministry administration. Let's take a moment just to pray together and then we will uh, proceed. All right, um, Daryl, why don't you please uh, pray with us together? Loving Lord, thank you for this wonderful morning, Lord. Thank you for we just come into your presence with by your hands of protection upon us, oh Father God. I just uh, summon this this great pastor. I pray for all the people those who join the Lord Jesus, oh Father God. You mold us into good professionals, into good leaders, oh Lord. Oh God, we submit this entire class into your mighty hands. We praise you, and you again. in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ah. Thank you. Good morning and welcome everyone once again to this class. I'm just going to quickly review what we did last, <clears throat> sorry, on Wednesday. So this week we are talking about uh, project management, uh, more of uh, executing, uh, planning, execution and coordination. Uh, let's quickly review and then we will go forward today and what we are going to cover. So what we said is a lot of things in the church and ministry involves this whole thing, area of project, what we call as project management. It involves planning, execution, coordination. So, you know, whether we are running different areas of our ministries or we're doing a conf conferences, mission trips, projects, other events, so many, so many things happen within the church context or Christian ministry context. And it is basically, if you look at it, it's basically running projects. You know, it's a it has a start, it has a finish. There's certain objectives you want uh, to do or accomplish, and you can run it as a project. Um, but of course, some of uh, these things require a lot of planning. Uh, and uh, so then we looked at it from a biblical perspective saying, you know, there are people who are not too comfortable in planning, but actually the Bible does teach us, you know, to plan, to think ahead, to acquire knowledge and to act wisely. Now, what the Bible tells us is not to be worried about future in Matthew 6 and not to be self-dependent, but to depend on God. And with that in mind, we can definitely plan. Then uh, we just introduced this whole idea of projects that uh, all of these things that we're trying to do can actually be run as projects. And uh, in, a, in a project, we generally, this is just a general project life cycle. Um, there's a, there's initi uh, in initiating a project, planning, executing, monitoring, and closing it out, bringing it to a close. And uh, then we also talked about, you know, what, what goes into making sure that these projects are successful. Uh, we mentioned about having a clear de clear def clearly defined objective, a practical timeline, good leadership, a good team, right skills, committed people. It's got to be constant feedback. Uh, we've got to be able to resolve problems and we have to finish well. So we just kind of gave went through this introduction. What I want to do today in the class is go through these five stages of a project life cycle. That means whatever we want to do, you know, you want to run a conference, you want to do mission trips, you want to do projects, you, you know, do a special project, you so many things. Uh, we go through this cycle over and over and over again, right? Now, so uh, we will, we want to talk about what, what, what happens in each of these stages as you plan to execute something, right? So that's the, the notes that I've just put out. And uh, now, uh, there is this whole field of project management, which um, is a very vast area of study. Uh, people do entire courses on project management, or maybe even get certificates or degrees in uh, project management and so on. So it's a very, very detailed, thorough area of study. A lot of big books are available. And um, there are all, you know, all, there, there are a lot of tools and resources and techniques on all these things, which is not what uh, we are going to get into on this course. 
but what I want to do is just give us an idea, like in these five stages, these are the things you should be doing so that as a church or as a ministry, when you are running different conferences or ministries or programs or, you know, events or outreaches, so you, you know, you have an idea like, okay, this is what I must be doing uh, to make sure that this thing comes out well, right? So that's my objective, or that's our objective in what we're doing. Right? And what you should be doing in each of these five stages. That's the goal, right? So we're not getting into all the details of it, uh, of project management, but we're getting an overview of what happens in each of these five stages, which will be useful, practical for us as we plan things. So stage one is initiating. Right? That means you're getting ready to uh, run a project. You're getting ready to, let's say you want to prepare for a conference or you want to create a website for your ministry, or you want to, you know, uh, do a project that will uh, feed uh, a certain group in a certain place. You know, okay, you're doing a project. So whatever it is, uh, there's stage one, which is initiate, initiating or in this starting of the project. And in this stage, uh, you have you know, the project plan, basically, what are the objectives? What do you want to achieve? Well, we, we need to feed a thousand people for three months, or we need to get a website done for our organization. Okay, that's your objective. Or we need to start a ministry that reaches, you know, young people, you know, you know, whatever that, that's over the next two years project. So objectives and then project timeline. That means uh, we want to do it in this time. Okay, we need to have a website ready in the next three months. Or, you know, we need to feed the people there, thousand people for three months. You know, so there's a timeline that means you're going to do it over a certain time. You also need to have a budget and people. That means budget means okay, we can spend so much money on this thing. Right. So to do the website, we can spend a hundred thousand rupees or to feed it a thousand people, we have been given, you know, uh, so much money, maybe uh, 10 lakh rupees that we can spend, or that's 1 million rupees that we can spend uh, over three months. So there's an amount of money that's available or money that's required that you can estimate. And uh, then the people, okay, these are the people who are gonna do it, right? So you have a plan. Now, usually, uh, um, when you're going to do something, you need a leader, right? And now you can call this person a project manager, you can call this person a team leader, but you need somebody who's gonna be responsible to get this done, right? So this leader is important because this leader is gonna be like the coordinator, the main person who's going to acquire resources. That means he's gonna put the people together, him and other things that are needed uh, to get the work done. Uh, he's going to fight fires and obstacles. That means uh, fight fires means he's going to handle all the difficult things. Uh, he's going to overcome, resolve the problems. He's going to provide leadership. Uh, he's going to be involved in negotiation, resolving conflicts, persuading people. So uh, he, he has to have those kinds of abilities. Uh, this leader needs to have credibility so that people will trust him, uh, put him in charge of this and trust him, trust him with money and resources. Uh, this person needs to have sensitivity to uh, the situation, sensitivity to people. Uh, you know, so there's that human side that's required. Uh, we already said leadership. Uh, there's got to be ethics. Uh, he's got to have a leadership style that matches what, what is needed. You know, For example, if you're going to go and feed people, um, you need somebody who is very humane, very people-centric. But whereas if you're going to build a website, you need somebody who's very technical, who, I mean, or at least who understands that, those kinds of things. So, you know, the style and the leadership style uh, depends on, it really depends on what kind of work you're getting done. And uh, the team leader also needs to handle stress because he or she will be the main point, uh, or the main person carrying the responsibility. So they're just, just gentle thoughts here or when you pick a person to lead the work. So in the initiating project, you need to have a plan. You need to have a person who's gonna lead the work. And then you also need to think about, okay, uh, 
what are the skills I need uh, for the team? That means, okay, I need to put a team of people together, but what kind of people do I need? Obviously, if you're going to build a website, then you need people who are going to, who know how to do that, right? Technical people. Uh, so you can decide, look, I need these skills required for this project. And it's going to be done in this timeline that is uh, in three months, right? So basically in your initiating stage, stage one, these are the things you're thinking about. The plan, the person is going to lead, and the kind of people you need to get the work done, right? So you're working through this process. Now, um, usually, as you have these discussions, you would decide these things as a group. That means you're a pastor or you're the leader of the Christian organization. You know, you may have a person who's handling uh, HR uh, or who, who's, who's going to help you find these people. Uh, you may have two or three other people who other pastors who are, uh, who are going to, you know, you're discussing this with the team of with the group of people saying, hey, this is what we need to do. Who's the best person who can lead this? You know, what kind of team we have? So you, this initial group would be, you know, the stakeholders, usually. It's the people who are, you know, overall responsibility for the project and they're thinking through on these things. And once they get all these thoughts together, they will find a person who's going to be their leader, a team lead or project manager and they will hand this work to that person to execute. Now, once we have that initial uh, initiating stage, you then move into the planning stage. That means this is usually done by the project manager, the team leader, right? So he's this person, he or she, is gonna plan this out. Okay, I've got a task to do. I've got a project to do. I've got to get a website put up, or I've got to feed a thousand people for three months, or I've got to go out there and care for people in the slums, whatever the project. You know, so the project manager, the team leader, will then work through these things, which is first of all, you've got to have a schedule. That means, what are you going to get done by when? Okay, so you have a plan. Okay, in three months. Example website. Well, in the first month, I need to have, you know, um, a prototype done. I need to have just an idea of what what we want to capture the website. Then, second month, uh, I need to have the website up uh, in the in a development environment, and I need to be able to see what's happening and the progress being made. And by the end of step uh, third month, you know, we can break it down further. Uh, I need to have it tested. I need to have it checked, and then I go live by this date, right? So you kind of break down the whole project and you arrive, have a project schedule. So typically they call it work breakdown structure. You will break it into smaller activities, put timelines to it, but you'll arrive at a schedule. This is a time plan. You also need to arrive at a cost estimation. That means this is going to overall cost us so much. Now, to arrive at the cost estimation, of course, you break it down. Okay, so we have to break it down to the money that needs to be paid as salaries. There is some. There are other expenses, like maybe we need to buy certain things, hardware, software, so on. Then there is there may be other things involved. So if, for example, if you're to go and you know feed a thousand people for three months, okay, of course there's a lot of money that's needed for the food. Uh, you need people who are going to do all the cooking and the distribution of the food. Uh, you need uh, uh, there may be travel involved because you may need to make sure that people are deployed where, where they're needed. Uh, so on. so all these things are become part of the cost. So you need to look at everything that's that goes into doing the project, arrive at the cost estimation. Then the activities, that means what are the things that need to be done to get the project completed, right? So you list out all the activities that need to be done. Think through, okay, yeah, we need this to be done. We need, so example, and feeding the people. Well, you need, peop you need people who are going to purchase all the materials, the raw food, the raw, raw materials from the market. 
uh, you need people who are going to be there to cook the food for three months. You need people who are going to be able to distribute the food to the people for this time. So basically, these are three main activities that will need to be done. Then, of course, you have, you know, maybe if if this it depends on how you're going to feed the people. You know, you may need people who are going to wash all the dishes or get rid of all the garbage that's being collected, you know, garbage disposal, waste disposal. So that might become another activity. So we are assuming these thousand people are living in a camp, they are living in their own homes, etc. But food is being delivered, you know, or they're coming to a particular place where they're eating the food. So, you know, depending on how we, how it's going to be done, you can break down the activities. Then you need to allocate resources. Who are the people who are going to do it? Right. So all this goes into the planning of it. You know, people are going to do these various activities. And you also want to think about what are the potential risks and how do we mitigate them? How do we either prevent them or if it does happen, how do we resolve them? So anything we do, there will be risks. You know, so example, if you're going to cook food for a thousand people, what if the main cook doesn't show up? Or the main cook goes on, well, do, you, do we have a backup? You know, so you you think like that, right? You, because that's a potential risk. What if we don't get the raw ingredients at the market that is closest? Do we have some other place where we can go and get the raw ingredients, you know, the vegetables, the rice, and the, the things that you're going to cook? Or uh, what if, uh, you know, uh, we don't have enough people to distribute the food? Can we get more people uh, to come. Uh, various things. You think about, okay, well, these are the risks involved and how do we mitigate, how do we resolve those risks or even prevent those risks, right? Uh, the best thing is to be preventive. Uh, so you always have a backup. You always have uh, preventive measures. Uh, in some cases, you may need to react. That means you have a plan. If it happens, then I will do this. In some cases, I can prevent it from happening because I know that is a potential risk. I can prevent it from happening by taking action right now. But these are the things that need to be thought through uh, when we are planning something, right? Uh, uh, everybody's with me so far? Let me just check. All okay so far? Yes, Pastor. Well, okay. All right. So thank you. Let's move forward. Then uh, when you are uh, thinking about uh, the planning, so you plan like this. Now, you know, uh, sometimes believers will say, you know, why are you thinking about risks? It's negative thinking. No, it's not negative thinking. Uh, we are just being wise. We are just thinking in advance of what are the potential problems and how to prevent them, right? So don't think that uh, just because we are doing a risk assessment that we are negative people. We're not negative people. Uh, we are preventive. We are wise. We are, uh, because, you know, things could go wrong and we are trying to prevent those things from happening because our goal is we want to get the project done, we want to get the work done. Um, what about the ministry, the conference, the website or the serving food for people or helping people in the slums, whatever the project is. Then we go to stage three, which is execution. Now, while the work the execution means, okay, now we jump in and start the work, right? So while the work is going on, during execution, there are some things that are very important to make sure the work goes on well, right? So while the work is going on well, what are some things? One very important thing is team interaction or communication. That means, uh, you see, to get the whole work done, there are different teams that are working, different groups of people that are working. So let's say, suppose we had to feed a thousand people for three months. Well, there is the purchasing people. That's one team. They are going to go and purchase all the raw ingredients. There is the cooking team. You know, you have we may have four or five people doing the cooking because thousand people have to be cooked three meals. Then you have the distribution team. You know, you may have fifty people in the distribution team because you know you have to get food to across to thousand people. Um, and these teams have to interact. They have to talk to each other. They have to let each other know. 
So the you know the purchasing team, in case they have a problem, they need to immediately inform the cooking team. Hey, today there is no salt. Uh, there's no salt. I can't buy salt. Then you know quickly find a find a solution. You know uh, how do we go get this ingredient that we need? Whatever. And I'm just making things up, but uh, there has to be communication between the various teams or the various people who are involved. So that is very important during execution. While the work is being done, communication should happen. Now, how this happens depends on how the work is being done, right? In a, if if it's a, you know some some a, 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 a work that's being done in an office setting, people of course can communicate through emails and all of that. But if it's a work that's being done on the field, uh, people are not sitting in front of computers; they are you know working busy on the field they're in the market or they're in the in the kitchen or they're out there cleaning up and getting ready for the next meal uh, in the in the in the in the in the hall where food's going to be served and so on so then you can't use email as a communication you probably just have to use phone calls or whatsapp messages something like that so that communication should be facilitated uh, depending on how the work is being done make sure that communication happens because that's very important to execution another important part in execution executing a project is team motivation that means people need to be encouraged people need to be motivated while the work is being done uh, because a lot of discouragement can set in uh, sometimes it's just plain tiredness. People can get tired. Uh, they need to take breaks. They need to refresh themselves, and um, they need to, you know, uh, feel excited and uh, energized about the work. So the project manager, the project leader, should keep a pulse on uh, the, the 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 people, uh, how they are feeling. Uh, are they being are they being motivated? You know, are they energized? Do they need a break? Uh, do we need to you know let somebody get some rest and somebody else take their place? And you know, um, so that team motivation, the morale of the team is very important during execution. Also, uh, uh, if there is conflict between team members, uh, that has to be addressed. Uh, and we will talk about that in the next uh, section. But um, motivating the team needs to be done uh, constantly. Right? Um, part of executing also is, you know, to have review meetings. You know, so you, you get, you know, various uh, various uh, teams. Now you can do this on a weekly basis, or you can do it, you know, on a daily basis. Really depends on how now uh, what the project is about but you need to review, right? How are things going uh, so that you can resolve problems as early as possible, as quickly as possible. So review meetings keep happening. Team members are talking. Uh, we resolve problems uh, as part of the execution. You know, so if you, you know, if you're building a website and something, people get stuck because they don't have the information they need that has to be addressed or maybe they're not sure what needs to be you know done in a certain situation then you need to bring in somebody who can help them uh, you know so the problems have to be resolved during this whole execution process and uh, we need uh, some sort of a way to highlight the problems and resolve them and one of the best ways is through these meetings you know daily or weekly review meetings uh, problems are highlighted, discussed, and resolved. Uh, other other thing about the execution is there may be purchasing that needs to be done. There were, uh, things that need to be bought, vendors uh, who need to be interacted with, um, hardware, software, or things that need to be bought. You know, so that there's this ex ongoing expense that happens, and somebody should be responsible for that. And then there is reporting. That means we want to inform stakeholders, uh, the leadership. So the project manager should inform the pastors or the, the leadership team saying, hey, uh, this is how things are going. Uh, we are on track or 
things are delayed or we run into some unexpected problems, whatever uh, is important. It has to be reported back to the leadership. So all this happens during execution, right? While the work is going on, uh, these are some of the things that take place that happen. And while the work is going on, there has to be monitoring. So that means they're keeping a check on how things are going. For monitoring to happen, there has to be measuring and controlling. That means measure. Uh, we need to look at the data. So measurements are based on data, you know, and, and we will, we will uh, explain some of these things. So there has to be measurement, then there has to be control. Like, okay, let's cut this down, let's expand. There has to be those decisions that are made. So what could happen? They, they could be expanding scope. So for example, maybe the project started out saying, we're gonna feed 1000 people for three months. But sometimes it could turn out that there are 1500 people who need to be fed. Oh, so it's, the project has become bigger. We planned for thousand, but there are actually 1500 people over there. So the scope has become bigger. Or you may have planned for three months, but the people are saying, look, uh, we are going to be, we need help for four months. So then the scope of the project has changed. It's expanded, it's become bigger than what we had originally thought. So this expanding scope, uh, this has to be monitored, you know, and this you will get to know only when you start the work. You know, you're gone there, you're on the ground, you're starting to help the people and suddenly you find that the need is much bigger than what you had initially planned for, right? So the scope expands, increases, and then we need to control. We need to make a decision. What do we do? How are you going to help? You know, you, you plan for 1,000 people, but now there are 1,500 people. What are you going to do? And, you know, or you plan for three months, but now they're saying help is needed for four months. What are you going to do? Right? How will you respond to that? Now, when the scope expands, obviously, there are increasing costs. Uh, sometimes, okay, uh, you know, the cost has gone up. Can you, do you have that extra money? Can you raise that extra money? Are you allowed to increase the cost and by how much, you know? And if you don't have that extra money, then what are you going to do with the scope? So what if you really don't have money to feed 1,500 people? Oh, we have to make some decisions. So then you will say, okay, should we go ahead and feed 1,500 people, but now reduce the time from three months to two months? Is it possible? Because we don't have the extra money we need, but the scope is bigger, right? So how do we resolve it? Maybe we can tell them that we can only feed them for two months because there are 500 more people than what we had budgeted. Or, if they say, look, you have to feed us for, you know, we need help for four months. How are we going to resolve that? Maybe we say we'll only give you two meals a day, two good meals a day. We'll just give you lunch and dinner uh, because, you know, we don't have that extra money. But maybe if you cut down on the breakfast, it will enable us to stretch for one more month. So we'll have to come up with those solutions. Or we have to go and raise funds saying, hey, we need that much more money because the scope of the project has become bigger than what we started with. So increasing costs. So along with, so the, the monitoring, you know, is needed because these are things that can happen uh, while the project is being executed. And then you need to quickly find solutions while things are happening in, in real time. Uh, there'll be other things that we need to monitor. That is people, like we said, you know, what, what if people leave? What if people become unwell? Uh, what if there are conflicts between people? Uh, uh, what if people are not performing as they should? Maybe they don't have the skills that they said they had and or their skills are not up to the same the level that we need. And so uh, they're not able to do the work. Uh, it will affect the project. It will affect what needs to be done. 
So people management becomes something uh, that we need to monitor, uh, evaluate, we assess, and then decisions have to be made. So example, if somebody is doesn't have the skill that we need, you know, then what do you do? Well, you may have to move them off the project and find somebody to replace them very quickly because we don't want uh, the whole project to be affected. So these are decisions that you make. You can make only if you measure and control. Only if you see how people are performing, can you uh, detect that problem and then resolve the solution. If you're not monitoring, what happens? That person who is not performing will just stay on the project. Project will keep getting delayed. And you'd be wondering, why is the project being delayed? It's because there are people who don't have the skills, who are not able to do the work. And so the things are being delayed, even though they may have claimed to know, have the skills and so on. Uh, it also monitor quality. That means, uh, you know, are, are we doing it to the level at which we want to do. So uh, example, the website that's being built, uh, you know, if there are problems at the website, those bugs have to be fixed or in feeding the people. Uh, is, 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 is the quality of the food being sent, given to the people, the what we plan to do? Or, or is the quality poor, right? So, so we have to monitor quality. Are we doing the work the way it needs to be done? And you also have to monitor schedule. Are we on time, right? Or is it getting delayed? Uh, are we following uh, the plan, the timeline that we had planned for, right? So these are things you need to keep monitoring. Monitor the scope, the size of the project. Monitor the cost, the money that's being spent. Monitor the people who are doing the work. Monitor the quality of what is being done. And monitor the schedule. Are we on? track as far as time is concerned. So this happens in every every case that we have to watch. Finally, uh, towards the end of the project, uh, you know, while we are in the closing final stage, you know, let's say the work is done uh, and now we have to wrap up, right? It's always good to do review and assessment of the project. Basically, this is an attempt for us to, of course, clean, close the project in a very clean way. But also, it is, an, it is an, a time for us to learn uh, from the experience and take the learning with us into future uh, work that we do, right? So we need to review and assess. So look back on the project, you know, what did we learn? What did we do right? Where did we go wrong? Or what are the problems we faced? How did we overcome those problems? Um, uh, what was what was the est, uh, what was the actual money that was spent versus what we estimated? Uh, did we go over and by how much, or did we come under and how much? Uh, uh, what about the time that we estimated? Did, you know, how did we do in time and cost? Uh, these are two main things that you would you know look at the estimate versus the actual. Uh, that money that was spent, uh, you know, how could we have avoided additional costs or how could we have avoided uh, time uh, that has gone away, um, you know, and then, so we do a, a good review of the project so that in the future, you know, we could apply or use those lessons that we have learned uh, from this experience, okay? So this is how we will go, we go generally speaking, right? Go about our work. Let me just quickly review. So uh, what we are saying is, or what we said is in the church or in the ministry, there'll be a lot of things that we have to do, you know, whether it's uh, ministries, conferences, trips, projects, other events, a lot of things that we have to plan, organize, execute, coordinate. How do we do that? Well, uh, the general approach is uh, to break it down into these five stages. One, when you initiate the project, you have a clear plan, you appoint a leader, you choose your leader based on the certain skills and capabilities they have, and then you also have to decide what kind of team you're going to have. Right? 
then the project leader takes it forward. The project leader develops a plan, draws up a schedule, uh, arrives at a cost estimate, uh, arrives at uh, breaking down the activities or the activities that need to be done, finding the right people who can fulfill those activities. Uh, also, things ahead about potential risks and uh, a plan to mitigate or prevent those risks or resolve those risks. So you do a good planning, then you jump in and start doing the work, executing it. So while the work is being done, make sure that uh, the team interactions and communications are good. Keep the people motivated, the team motivated. Uh, have review meetings, discuss things, resolve problems. Uh, there will be money that is spent purchasing, things like that. And also you provide reports to the leadership, keep them updated on the progress of the project. And while things are being, while you're in the execution, you're also monitoring. That means you're keeping a check, you're measuring and checking things. Whether the scope of the project, the size of the project is what you thought it would be, what it's been planned for, uh, the money being spent, uh, people, are they doing well? Interactions are going fine. Uh, the quality of what's being done, is it good? and are we on schedule and in time. And once the project is over, you're towards the end of it, do a full review and assessment. Look back, how, how was this experience? How, was, how did we do? Uh, listen to the people, let the people give feedback. Um, look at the data, the actual versus the estimate in terms of cost and time. Uh, what could we have done better? And then Take these lessons for use on future projects or similar activities. All right, so that is in general how we do these projects uh, so that, you know, uh, as the church or the ministry keeps doing this, they can become better. Yeah, uh, I would encourage documentation, that means write down experiences, write down what you've learned. Uh, and uh, usually we capture it in uh, planning documents. That means, suppose we do a conference, let's say a Christian leaders conference, then we have a planning document where to do that conference, all these things have to be done. Basically, it's based on lessons we have learned from doing that conference in previous years. We capture that so that the person who's put in charge to do that uh, can benefit from the learning of uh, the previous years in doing a similar or a same conference. You know, so when you document it, when you capture those experiences, then uh, you know, we don't have to make the same mistakes again. Uh, we can be aware of what are the challenges that would come up and prevent those challenges from happening. Okay, so that's just an idea of how we execute projects, carry out the practical side of carrying out a conference or a ministry work. Uh, this is how we would go about things. Any questions before we close out for today? Any thoughts, any ideas you wanna share? All good, everybody understood? Yes, Pastor. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay, I see your comments on the chat. Thank you. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, let's close in prayer and uh, we will continue uh, our, our topics here next week. All right, let's pray together. Let's dismiss. May I ask, uh, I don't know, maybe may I'll ask uh, uh, Siddharth, maybe you could pray and dismiss the class for us, please. Yeah, Pastor. Sir.
Lord, this morning, thank you for this day I've given us, Lord. Lord, we just want to pray that um, as we end our classes, Lord, we just want to pray that you'll be with us and guide us and lead us, Lord. Lord, I just want to pray that you bless each and every one of us as we continue our day. Bless the teaching that we have just learned. And I pray, God, that everything that we've been learning, I pray that it's like an investment to our knowledge. And I pray that we put into practice and let it apply, help us to apply in our life, oh God. And I just want to pray that will be with us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray, God. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and have a good weekend. Enjoy your weekend as you spend time worship and receiving God's word. God bless you all. See you next week. Bye now. Thank, Thank you. you Pastor. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Prince. Bye now. Okay.